The first module we are going to look at is bioavailability and bioaccessibility of the nutrients in our foods. This relates to all of the other modules that we will be taking a look at when we look at the specific nutrients such as carbohydrates, protein, and fat. We're going to investigate each of these nutrients, but we first need to find how they are and become accessible to our body for use. The next two slides are going to look at the definition of bioaccessibility and bioavailability. First, we're going to take a look at bioaccessibility, which is the ability of the body to absorb the nutrients. It is highly related to bioaccessibility, as you must make the nutrients available before you can actually use them. This is often discussed as a process that occurs within the GI tract when we actually digest our food. Looking at bioaccessibility, which we stated in the last slide, was our body's ability to absorb the nutrients. Bioavailability is the body's ability to take those nutrients from the foods that we consume through digestion and absorption and it makes them available for things such as maintenance, repair, and growth. As we look at growth, the stages of the life cycle make nutrients more available and more accessible. This is just an example. For if we take a look at calcium in pregnancy, for a normal adult, that is a non-pregnant adult woman, they absorb around 20 to, let's say, 30% of the calcium that we consume. For a pregnant woman, they consume greater than 50% of the calcium that they consume. So this shows that our body is very, we'll call it smart, in the sense that it can make more of the nutrient available and accessible if we need to. The relationship of bioaccessibility and bioavailability are very dependent on many factors, which we will take a look at in greater detail on other slides. But the whole process of making the nutrients more accessible and more available begin with digestion both mechanical, and we're going to just take a look at mechanical digestion at this time. Mastication, which means just chewing our food, makes more surface area available for things such as enzymes, hydrochloric acid, to be able to work on these nutrients and release them so we can absorb them. So, not being your mother, but I guess, you really should never swallow foods in large chunks. You should chew your food well to make sure that you have accessibility of these nutrients. That's why often when we see things such as vitamins and mineral supplements, we note that the nutrients are not as accessible as say they are in foods because in the pill they're actually surrounded by chemicals that pack them in tightly so the person's able to take that supplement and swallow it and those substances are not worked on the same way by the enzymes and the hydrochloric acid so those nutrients are not as accessible to our body. We know that foods definitely get more nutrients out of foods, but we think that there are other factors that actually help with the accessibility. Those being some of the phytochemicals, and again, we don't know all that these phytochemicals can do, but we know that they do help with the processing 
and with the absorption and, in essence, the accessibility of these nutrients. Now think of a mechanically altered diet, and specifically I'm thinking about a puree diet, where we have more surface area. In essence, those nutrients should be more available to that individual. Now, of course, there are other factors that affect the individual, such as things like disease states, age. Um, they all, we know that age definitely decreases enzyme production. So there are other factors, but in essence, if you just in theory take a look at a pureed diet, if we all would eat pureed food, we would have more accessibility to those nutrients in our food. Now, anybody who has ever tried a pureed diet probably right now is thinking, that's never going to happen, and I don't blame you. Here's an example of how different factors can decrease the bioavailability and bioaccessibility of nutrients. We know that spinach has high levels of iron, but as nutrition professionals, it's not one of the first food items that comes to mind when we say have a client who has iron deficiency anemia. And consider why. It's a healthier alternative to getting iron than, say, meat products, right? We tell people, if you have iron deficiency anemia, eat red meat. Well, nutritionally, the spinach is more nutritious, better for the individual. But the iron levels, are they as accessible as in that meat? Gave you a couple of seconds to ponder that. And the answer is no, because of what else is in the food. With red meats, we know that the, there is nothing in the meat to make the iron not accessible to the body. With the spinach, there's a substance called oscalates that actually bind the iron and make it unavailable. As we take a look at the next two slides, we are going to see that there are many factors that can affect the bioaccessibility and bioavailability of the nutrients. All right, so let's take a look at number one. The higher the fat content of the food, the slower the absorption rate. This also occurs with high protein foods. So if the absorption, the motility of the gastrointestinal system is slowed down, the nutrients are actually more accessible to those villi and microvilli so we can absorb these nutrients. Fiber actually causes a decrease in the bioaccessibility and bioavailability of nutrients. Simple carbohydrate content actually can increase the absorption rate if eaten, say, alone. Cooking can increase the absorption rate by breaking down the cell membranes of the food and making them more, have more surface area so our body is able to absorb them. Mastication or chewing can also help increase the surface area. Phytic acids, oxalates, as we saw in our last example, can actually bind to different minerals, making them unavailable to our body to absorb. We also see that GI motility can increase or decrease the absorption rate. So think about the fat and the protein that we talked about from the last slide they actually are not as absorbed as rapidly as carbohydrates, in particular simple carbohydrates that are not like bound to fiber. And this slows down the motility if we have a, say, a uh, product 
or a food that we consume that is high in protein and or fat. So the nutrients actually are more available to the body because the body can absorb them because they're actually in contact with the villi and the microvilli for longer periods of time. Other issues, such as issues with enzyme production, can decrease the bioavailability and the bioaccessibility. Such things as aging or different stomach disorders can actually decrease the amount of enzymes our body produces. This also goes with gastric bypass surgery. When they bypass all of that small intestine, they decrease the body's ability to make enzymes and inevitably impact greatly that bioaccessibility and that bioavailability of nutrients. That's why when we see many individuals who have surgery, or this in particular gastric bypass surgery, they actually are given enzymes to consume, and they need to consume also vitamins and minerals because they're not as accessible. There's not that surface area anymore. Um, and many things also need to be more pulverized, almost pureed and liquefied. Uh, again, because of the issues with bioaccessibility and bioavailability. We know that bacterial overgrowth can actually decrease accessibility. Now, when I talk about bacterial overgrowth, I'm thinking of bacterial overgrowth in the gastrointestinal system, um, in the large or the small intestine. So we would see that uh, this bacterial overgrowth often causes diarrhea and or stomach pain. So the diarrhea would increase the GI motility. In other words, things would go quickly out of the um, gastrointestinal system, the uh, smaller and the large intestine, and stomach pains might decrease a person's appetite, hence, in essence, then decreasing the bioavailability and bioaccessibility of the nutrients. Surgery, any type of surgery really to the abdomen can cause issues with bioavailability and bioaccessibility. Even if the surgery wasn't really performed on the abdomen, but during the process, they needed to, say, move your intestines or um, needed to kind of set them aside, uh, your in intestinal tract, that can affect enzyme production, it can affect the villi, and in essence, impact the accessibility of these nutrients. All right, this last slide in this presentation today is going to ask you a question to kind of process the information that we discussed. So what I'd like you to do is guess which one is the most available from the items listed below. A sugar-coated deep-fried donut, a full cup of slightly undercooked legumes, legumes are the beans, a steak, or a hamburger or a spoonful of sugar. Give you a second to think here. The most bioavailable would be the spoonful of sugar. It's a simple carbohydrate, not attached to any kind of fiber. There's large surface areas because it is already more or less kind of consumed for you. Think about when you take in any sugar, if you take a spoonful of sugar, you don't really masticate it or chew it. There's a, a large surface area. And the fact that it's a simple carbohydrate increases that bioaccessibility and bioavailability. So why not things such as the sugar-coated donut? I mean, that has sugar on it too. But because it's deep fried, it also has fat, um, which we know will increase the bioavailability of the nutrients. The undercooked legumes, 
because there's lots of fiber in those, as well as there could be some phytic acid and oxalates in, the, in them binding the nutrients to it. And if you take a look at the next example, a steak versus a hamburger, out of those two, which one would you consider to be the most bioavailable? If you said hamburger, you are correct. Because again, the hamburger is, has more surface area, more ability for the enzymes to work on, and in essence makes the nutrients more bioaccessible, bioavailable. Our next module, we're going to take a look at carbohydrates and specific nutrients. And so I look forward to talking with you then.